According to ancient Greek texts, the Argonauts' ship, the Argo, was not what we think. It was not a trireme like the movie Jason and the Argonauts were showing. This ship was believed to have been a flying ship, a flying spacecraft. As skaphos in Greek means ship, aeroskaphos means airplane, for example. This is one of the images recently taken by U.S. Navy of a UFO USO. It was coming out of the sea and, of course, with hyperspeed going into space. Now, in the previous video, you'll notice that we had an archaeologist telling us about where he believed the Argo, the ship of the Argonauts, is, is to be located today. It should be in the area of central Greece, about an hour or so drive north of Athens, in the area around Thebes, a port called Almira. So it, uh, he believes that since Greek archaeologists do not go there, it's just a matter of time before a foreign archaeological team knows about this location. These are the gates of a city that was built there at the time of King Herod. He used to have a fishery in there and um, salt the fish and send them to Rome and other areas of the Mediterranean. That's how he made his tremendous amount of funds to uh, construct all the, the buildings that he's well known for. Herod of Israel. Now let's go into what another archaeologist says about the fact that the Argo of the Argonauts was not a trireme like this, that it was a flying craft. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now we know that uh, the uh, Egyptos, Egypt means of course, um, and uh, Aegea, the Aegean Sea, uh, means that Ypt means, Ypt means flying. So uh, the area of Egypt must have had spacecraft because of the just the name, the nomenclature, Egypt, meaning Egypt, meaning flying craft. We know this was a fact by the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean. And you can see the playlist of my uh, the Emerald Tablets I've read, read there for you. Tremendous amount of uh, detail and explanation as to what kind of really advanced technology they had. Not only air flight and space flight, interstellar flight, but also interdimensional travel. And because of the fact that they misused their technology, Thoth says it was just a matter of time before a divine intervention to do away with the Atlanteans. Now, this uh, thing here is translated again from a Greek article for you by an archaeologist, a lady. She says, the Argo, the ship of the Argonauts, was not what we think. The Argonauts report that the Figos, or Dodona oak, it was made of oak, was placed in the Argo. They also placed siderite which was a type of a metal, a talking stone, which the Orphics in the chapter on the stones, quote unquote, report that it had magical properties as it condensed the voices of the gods from the universe and created terrible, that is, um, unbelievable, exper astonishing experiences. In many parts of the Argonauts, uh, the report, the text concerning the Argonauts, there is a report of a flight to Argos, and many other strange things that are not explained by a sailing boat. Because flight, the Argos, as we know, is a place just south of Corinth in the, the Peloponnese of Greece. It's a very, very ancient city. It's near um, the area of uh, where King Minos was, uh, the uh, Mycenes, and uh, close to Sparta. And we know Sparta was, of course, of the tribe of Dan, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So this, that's the general area. A flight to Argos means that, of course, this ship was not sailing on the sea. It was flying in the air. And many other strange things that are not explained by a sailing boat. Now, the Argonauts, we read, Canthos Avantiadis died when Argo was flying over Libya. Let's remember, it was flying through the Mediterranean to the Black Sea, 
across the Atlantic to South America into central Libya. I mean, what was going on there? How can any sailing boat go from one place to the other so fast? And we have text saying that it flew, it was flying. And Kanthos Avantiadis died when Argo was flying over Libya, according to verse 145. And verse 246, 1163 says the eloquent Argo determined the route and the obstacles she would encounter before her. And by order of the goddess Athena, Argo got up very quickly. In other words, she took off. All right? She um, uh, took off from the ground very quickly. Verse 270. Verse 208, the Argonaut Aegeus. Remember that the Argonauts, the people that were in this fleet of the uh, Jason and the Argonauts, we know Her Hercules was there, uh, Ulysses was there, and various other uh, well-known uh, heroes of ancient Greece. So Aegeus of the Argonauts knew the movements and the course of the stars, verse 208. We know that a lot of very educated people and even royalty and the top scientists and the top navigators were there. It wasn't just anybody that was there. So they weren't just people, you know, plain Roman, uh, people like uh, uh, the class of uh, slaves or serfs that were rowing these uh, triremes. These people there were all royalty and very educated people, scientists. So uh, the Argonaut, I guess, knew the movements in the course of the stars. Does that remind us of something? Well, that reminds us of the Antikythera device that knew all the constellations. Why would they need to have a, some kind of a device that would track the constellations? And the Earth was the center. It was a, it was a geocentric system. Okay, Refer, in reference, this uh, Antikythera device was in reference to Earth being the center of everything. Um, now, the Argonaut, it doesn't mean that, you know, our, our system is not a solar system. It's just that... You can even have the moon as being the center of everything and have everything in relation to the moon. doesn't mean anything. But that's what the uh, Antikythera device knew. Why would they have to go into the very advanced uh, algorithmic situation of this ancient computer of the Antikythera device, knowing exactly what the locations of the constellations were and the stars in the constellations and even Venus and uh, Saturn and all this? Now going on, verse 224 says, The sons of the north, Zetis and Calais, flew with their feet they had under the heels of their feet and looked like immortals. Okay? They, had, they, had, they flew with what they had uh, under, uh, you know, their, their, uh, their shoes. They, they had something under their shoes that made them fly like gods. Okay? Obviously this was advanced technology that each person had that they could sort of fly with something that was coming out, the, coming out of their heels, out of their feet. Now, Athena flew to heaven. So she flew up into the sky. Verse 558. Verse 1244. Um, Kirki flew uh, backwards. Flew backwards. In the book True Prehistory of Passas, we read that the Argonauts were found in Lake Tritonida in Libya. So they were also in central Libya. On this, Herodotus writes, quote, while sailing the Malea was swept away by a strong wind. Malea, I guess, was uh, uh, one of their ships. It was swept away by a strong wind and was thrown onto into the rocks of Lake Tritonida in Libya, end quote. Such a course is, of course, justified by flight. And if it was thrown onto the rocks, it would have been completely dismantled. It would have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, broken apart. But also the modern researcher I. Rispin informed us that Lake Tritonida is so far from the sea that a pedestrian had to walk 12 days and nights to cross it, hence the distance of about a thousand kilometers. It's un it is unlikely that our goal was transported so far from 50 Argo by 50 Argonauts that they could not even lift it. So obviously it was flying. Now there, according to the book True Prehistory, they crossed the Heraclean columns, that is the uh, rocks of Gibraltar, 
the uh, Gibraltar Strait and went out to the Atlantic and from the mouth of the river Rio de la Plata, reaching the highlands of Peru. This is according to Apollodorus Book A, where in 1978, Greek amphora and Greek maya were found uh, by supposedly belonging to the Incas. Okay, so we have Greek amphora and Greek maya, meandros, you know, that thing that looks like a, a, a German swastika, that's actually a Greek symbol. Uh, which means, because I we, that's all over the uh, carvings in uh, ancient Epidaurus, the Theater of Epidaurus, and they have a little museum there. And uh, when I was there oh, many years ago, I asked one of the people there, I said, you know, the people, the curators there, what is that, what exactly does that symbol mean? Because we know that the Germans use it. He says, that means peace. The Greeks use that to, uh, you know, it means peace. Okay. Now, going on with this article. For thousands of years, humanity has been forced to live in the historical amnesia and historical ignorance of its secular path. It seems inconceivable to us that Gaia, uh, uh, our Earth, once had a glorious civilization, perhaps even pre-flood or pre-Atlantean destruction, with which it was a member of a galactic society, and how it was later isolated due to the negative behavior of, of mankind. This is by uh, Yerasmus Kaluyerakis, The Testament of Prometheus and the Earth in the Trajectory of Death. Quote, the castles in ancient Lolilcos uh, are fading. The sky looks like stars waiting for our goal. The centuries that pass like long journeys, Jason, Jason is held in bright stars, end quote. This is by Nena Venetsanu and um, are from uh, 2011. So obviously we see that not only were they all over the place uh, with this thing uh, and in the depths of central Libya, but also to Latin America. And th there'll be another video. I have other information concerning what happened to, you know, Greeks going even reaching Latin America. Perhaps they are also, let's remember that uh, the Thebans, uh, there's Thebes in Egypt and there is a, the, uh, uh, text that says that the Thebes of uh, central Thebes, which was supposedly the center of civilization, even before Athens was a city, or Corinth, or all these places, they went to Thebes in Egypt. And also, a lot of these names in Egypt are Greek names. For example, Memphis, Memphida, or Suez is the, if you spell it backwards, it means Zeus, meaning the top god of the uh, pantheon of uh, the, the ancient gods. Or if you have a Suez is Zeus and um, Said is Theas, again meaning Zeus, and things like that. So all these names in uh, uh, a lot of places in Egypt are actually Greek names spelled backwards, Greek, uh, Greek nomenclature. So, uh, and again, we have the DNA of ancient Minoans from Crete found in the Native uh, Americans, especially around the Great Lakes area. And uh, we know that their, their alphabet was what the Greeks had, what the, the, the ancient uh, Hebrews had before they, or their exodus to uh, Babylon, where they changed their, um, the, looking, the, the style of their uh, alphabet. But even the names of their letters in Aramaic and Greek are the same. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta in Greek. Aleph, Beta, Gamma, Delta in, in uh, Hebrew. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of uh, information having to do with this forbidden, te uh, forbidden technology and forbidden history, pre-flood perhaps, um, that sort of uh, combines with uh, everything around the earth. Anyway, I hope you like this. This was from a uh, translation from a Greek article on the Adrastika for you. Thank you for your support and please leave your comments. Thank you.